Truro to get into the entrance and then we're gonna make our way back up and through how many Hobbitstown. people live in Truro how many people live in Truro mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know I know the population of Provincetown on the winter is about 3,000 um, a lot more since COVID yeah a lot of people moved out yeah so um, the houses that were like the winter houses or the summer houses that were only occupied in the summer because um, you know I would take a lot of walks and you know the beach houses that were usually empty in the winter all of a sudden were occupied mm. um, so a lot more people than before so yeah you can see like prints up there I'm not sure those are probably animals animal tracks up there I can't see well enough to see if there's a Yeah, yep, so there's lots of animals out here, actually. So, um, as you can see in that picture of people running around out there, there was no uh, vegetation back then, prior to 1983. So in 1983, to kind of try to reverse the destruction and the erosion, they came out here, the conservationists, and they hired uh, people to come out for $8 an hour, and they planted this grass, one bundle at a time, and underneath, the sand, the roots mesh together like a mat to try to stabilize the sand and, and stop it from blowing and prevent erosion. Now on a windy day, the wind will grab the tips of the, the grass and whip it around and create circles in the sand. You can see a little bit there. It's kind of cool when there's a lot of it up there. There's some, um, and we nickname it compass grass because of that little um, You may have heard it. Lots of boats coming in and out on a daily basis. But what was happening, because it was so windy up here, obviously without the vegetation back then, is a lot of the sand was blowing into this part of the harbor, East Harbor. So they were afraid that that was going to affect the main harbor. So what they did, um, because it was causing lots of sandbars, um, causing shipwrecks. Province Town was infamous for shipwrecks. Um, just to give you kind of an idea, this is another map. This is us, this is the tip of the Cape Race Point. All of these little dots going around, those are all shipwrecks. Oh wow. So not just here, but around Race Point, lots and lots of shipwrecks. So what they ended up doing in 1863 was building a causeway, which is the road you see here. The road in the province down used to go right along the dunes. So they built a causeway, filled this in with more sand and fresh water, renamed it Pilgrim Lake. So now the main harbor was protected from all the sand. Now this is technically a lake. Um, it has brackish water now, which is a mixture of salt water and fresh water. And the fresh water rises to the top because it's lighter and the salt water sinks to the bottom because it's heavier. And that comes into play out here when we talk about the animals out here and the people who stay out here, how they're able to access fresh water when they're out here. So then, an, hmm, go ahead. Are there fish in that lake? So there used to be um, a lot of fish. Now there's only, there used to be like, um, when it was more fresh water, there used to be like catfish and stuff like that. But now there's mainly um, horseshoe crabs and some flounder. So in 1875 was when they built the railroad and then eventually the road into Provincetown, which um, was great for tourism, great for the economy. Um, that's when the people started um, discovering Provincetown and started coming walking into Provincetown. So none of this grass was here until people were hired to plant it. Well, the dune grass. 
and then a lot of this stuff um, just came naturally. But prior to 1800s, back in the 1600s, the sand wasn't even visible. So in the 1600s, there was a thin layer of topsoil covering all the sand and big, tall, hardwood trees back in the 1600s. So you all have been here, come here quite frequently. So you might know um, why the monument is here in town. Yes, so the pilgrims landed here, um, but we know that they didn't do anything with the trees or with the forest out here. So they didn't have anything to do with the, um, the destruction of the forest because they only stayed here for about six weeks. They moved right across uh, the bay to Plymouth. Um, you can see it when you're at Herring Cove, it's not that far away. Now this thin layer here of black, this is actually a little bit of topsoil left over from many, many years ago. You can see some there, you can see some back there. 